Jesse Allen here, and today we're being joined by Jason Steffel. He is uh, the product manager for Iowa, Minnesota, and the Dakotas for Bravant Seeds. Jason, how are you today? Fantastic. Good morning. Well, Jason, I appreciate you uh, joining us here today on Market Talk uh, to talk about a few different things when it comes to late season pests. That's our topic here this week. And I think just to start, what pests are kind of spurring some conversations here this season? We know it's been kind of an interesting year, depending on what part of the country you're in. And obviously, with the dryness in, in Iowa, Minnesota, the Dakotas, I'm wondering, is that spurring some different conversations or, or what are we seeing with pests right now? Well, you know, with our area, uh, you know, soybean aphids has always been something we're very familiar with. And uh, some of the conversations right now that I'm hearing is, you know, it's pretty spotty this year. You know, different weather events. Um, we all know our, our conditions locally. Um, it's pretty, pretty spotty with rain. Um, but it's the same thing with aphids this year. They know they're there. Uh, people have been doing a great job scouting and getting out and looking, communicating, connecting. And uh, but really, you know, the applications and management of the aphids is, again, just been spotty overall. The one, though, in soybeans that seems to be catching a little bit of buzz out there is, you know, the two spotted uh, spider mite. And that one, you know, it flares up in our backyard kind of sporadically. It's really about, you know, driven on by the dry conditions. And people are always asking and, uh, you know, what should I be looking for? What's the threshold? Um, what should I spray? You know, how do I treat? How do I manage? And those things are ongoing, I think. So that's been kind of one insect to me that's kind of popped up quite a bit lately. What about on the corn side? Any uh, pests or insects there to watch? Yeah, yeah. We've, um, you know, most recently, I think the last two weeks has been a lot of the questions I've been receiving and others as well is, is really around, um, you know, how do we kind of manage these adult rootworm beetles that we're seeing? And it's not everywhere. Um, it's some hot spots around there. We all kind of know where they're at and people are watching. I mean, they're getting out, taking a look. And, uh, you know, as we were getting into that pollination phase about two to three weeks ago, pretty hot and heavy, uh, we started to notice them. And we were worried about, you know, the silk clipping because um, that's really a, a delicate area of, in terms of yield production in corn is right around that time of pollination. It's pretty critical. So guys started getting out, looking around more and we're, we're hearing some people, you know, treating for them, that those adults to help the, pro the products through uh, pollination. But also it's, it's important to think about next year's crop because uh, helping to, you know, mitigate that population, especially on the adult side, will help to minimize how many eggs are laid and the population for the years to come. Well, now you mentioned scouting and how uh, folks have already been out in those fields scouting a little bit. Uh, what should be their plan here as we move late season? Should they continue their scouting on a regular basis? Is there really is there a certain time frame they really need to make sure they're out there? What what are we looking at as far as scouting here as we go late season? Um, my advice is don't give up on the scouting. It is really important here. I mean, we're in some critical stages in a lot of your listening area um, that we need to be vigilant. We need to continue to monitor, you know, those soybean aphids or the spider mites for the next two weeks for sure. And uh, because, you know, in soybeans, this is a really critical time. If we catch some rains, um, they have a chance. You know, there's some opportunity for additional yield bump in beans with August rains. So continue to walk some corn, too. Um, just getting a few reports here just now. Um, pictures coming in this week on earworm in corn which to me is a little bit early, but it's it shouldn't be surprising. But um, that was one pest I would, did not have on my radar. But again, without scouting, we wouldn't know that we'd need to start monitoring for that as well. So, Jason, is there anything that farmers can do to protect their crops now through harvest? Is there anything specific you'd want to point to there? You know, I, I know there's some opportunities, but really in most of the listening area, I mean, what we've been able to put forth in our management practices, you know, in terms of fertility, you know, uh, obviously the weed control um, monitoring insects, I think would, to me, would be the last thing that we can really do, uh, you know, to protect our yield and make sure that, you know, if we got a good crop coming, um, you know, we look at all the factors. I know there's a lot of things they're gonna have to think about between, you know, do I, do I control this and return on my investment, things like that. But I think at this point, this stage in the game, um, just continue to keep an eye out there for those pests that might rear up 
um, that's our last opportunity to really manage the crop. Well, I'm sure as well, if uh, producers have questions, they can reach out to uh, you and other uh, local Bravant uh, seed representatives and agronomists, and they can also learn more at bravant.com. Jason, appreciate you joining us here, and I know we'll talk to you next week about the uh, the weather conditions and get an update on the uh, Northern Plains crops. So for now, I appreciate the time. Thanks so much. Thank you.